Hey everybody, it's Eric from the MMG. Welcome to our channel. Today we're not doing gaming, but we're going to do a PC build. And we have got a new gaming PC we are ready to put together. And today we're going to focus on the motherboard, the Gigabit B650 Gaming X board. We are building another AMD machine. And yes, this is back-to-back -back AMD builds for me. I've really enjoyed my previous one I built about four years ago. Uh, shout out to AMD. Make sure you sponsor my videos. Give them a shout out in the comments below. Um, let them know you want to see more from our channel here. Why am I showing you the Kraken 240? Well, a lot of times when you're installing a water cooler or really a lot of heat sinks onto your motherboards, you need you want to do that when you can get easy access to the motherboard before you put it all into the case. Speaking of the case, today we're going to be using this Landcool Mesh C case, which I fell in love with at Micro Center. So let's get uh, started here. I'm going to show you step by step how to do this install. All right, so we got our motherboard here. We're gonna take it out of the box. Whenever you're working on a computer, you do want to make sure you are grounded um, to whatever surface. Uh, usually, if you can hold on to something metal, or they make grounding strips you can buy uh, that you you know you clip to something metal and it grounds you, so you don't shock your electronic components and damage anything. So make sure you're doing that if you can. All right, so this is a big, heavy-duty motherboard. I'm excited. We got all the pieces in the box right here we're going to pull out. All these cables to go with it. Alright, we're going to shut this down there. And we're going to unbox this and take a look at it here. Hello, daughter, what's up? Hey, what are those things that I always call eagles? And then you say that they're called vultures? Crows? All right, every motherboard is going to have a manual. Make sure you go through that and you follow all the steps and you don't miss anything and you make sure you do things the proper way. Uh, this particular motherboard could be different from the motherboard you're installing, so make sure you uh, read all the instructions on how to do everything because what I'm doing may not work exactly for your motherboard and we don't want to cause it to be damaged. So as a disclaimer, follow your guide, not me. All right. So we have... Several things we're going to do here. Right here's where the processor goes, if you don't know that. And there's going to be a little lever right here. And this is the same. It's going to be very similar for AMDs and for um, Intel processors. But you got to press down and then pull over. You know, let, let it come up like that. And then you can lift it up. And then this part will actually lift up then. And there's where your processor is going to be seated. Make sure you don't let dust or debris get in there. You want to keep it clean. So I would actually wait to do anything with this until you're ready to put your processor in itself. Okay. All right, now the next step is we need to remove these two brackets here on the edges with the Phillips heads so we can apply our heat sink. This is gonna be different for everybody. If you're just doing a regular air heat sink, you will have to do these steps most likely. It will just um, be able to socket on here. And obviously at that point, you just wanna leave your CPU or yeah, your processor installed too. You don't have to take it off. But this is a little bit different step. So we're taking the bracket off. Make sure you keep all these pieces because you may change out coolers at some point, or you know, whatever. You may need them. All right, I'll take those two out. Now you're gonna see you have these screws here. And with this heat sink, it wants you to install the right ones. So right here it says Intel 1700. Not what we're using. We're doing an AMD. So if you look right here, here is your AMD. And it's labeled AMD 5, AMD 4. It shows you which way to put the bolts. And they're the bolts. So that's the ones we want to use. All right, now you, you'll see these for the AMDs have a long part and a short part. And for my particular socket, which is the AMD 5, we want to put the long part at the bottom. So you're going to want to take these and screw them into the bottom. And I, uh, sorry, I forgot. Put your sleeve on the right way first too. So like I said earlier, I showed you the picture of the sleeve. That's how you put it on. So I'm doing up. So put the sleeve on, grab that, put this on. And again, make sure you read the instructions that come with it because all the different sockets are done differently. And make sure you're using the right pieces, okay? Don't forget that. 
Okay, once you have these on, make sure they're nice and hand tightened at least. All right, so next step for the installs, we've got to pull off the bracket here on the actual heat sink itself. So be careful taking this piece of plastic off because there is right there your thermal paste. And so you don't really want to touch that. So um, for this particular one, we got to take this off. And I don't, let's see if I thought it would come right off. It does not. So let me see what we need to do. We probably just need to turn it. There we go. So you turn it counterclockwise and it'll snap right out. That's the one that came on it by default. Now, according to your instructions, find your bracket. This was the one we have for the AMD5. And uh, basically install it just how you took that one off. And remember, watch out for that thermal paste. So we're gonna pop it on there. It kind of slides right on real nice and easy, okay. And now we're just gonna find it where it's in place, whoops. And uh, turn that like a clock. Now we wanna go clockwise, I believe. You do wanna be careful because this is gonna go on a certain way. So do make sure however you have your nozzles. So right here, you want it to be coming up in a certain direction. Well, then you want to make sure, like for me, I think I want them coming up either this side or this side, not on this side. It looks like it's shallower on those sides. It doesn't really matter. And you can obviously change this. But for me, I want that to happen. So I'm going to put it here. There we go. And it did. It turned right on once I did it. So now we're on. We're good. That part's done. Pretty cool little box. Again, you want to make sure you're grounded. You're following instructions on the uh, processor itself. So here it is. It's going to slide out and there's your instructions. Okay, we're going to pop it open. This one feels heavier than most of my previous processors, just to be honest, which is unique. Let's, um, the, the key to it is there's a little pattern. And one of these sides will have an arrow on it, like that right there. And you just look for where that goes. Right there's the arrow. See it right here in this corner? There should be an arrow on your on your motherboard. And so you want to put match your arrow with that arrow so you know that's how it seats in there. There's also these little notches on the side that you know you get it the right way. So just make sure it's seen there. Don't press it down hard or anything. Just make sure it's set. And then you want to grab this. You are going to want to take this black cover off now. So that just snaps right off. And you want to set this down on it, and then you take this little lever that you unleash. You want to make sure it's on top, right? And you want to press it down. Oops. And you want to press it down and get it lashed back underneath there. Just like that. Now our processor is seated. Make sure it's flat. Everything looks good. That, that part is done. Now we're ready to actually apply the heat sink itself. Now, with that said, Make sure you're ready for this step. You have every plastic off your heat sink, everything else out of the way, and you're ready to go and you're not gonna damage anything. All right, so remember remember the line up here. I want mine facing this way, so I'm installing it just like this. Now we're gonna take the ends right here that came with the uh, heat sink. Get these little ends on them. And there should only be, I think, one set of these. I don't think you have multiple sets of these. You don't have to worry about that getting wrong. And uh, yeah, we're gonna put them on here. And uh, I recommend just loosely put all four on so you got a nice, even. Make sure they're all nice and hand tightened first. And that might that would be a good step for you before you go putting a screwdriver on it. All right. Now I do recommend you tighten this a little bit with a Phillips, but not super tight. Okay, we're not trying to break anything. Just snug them up just a little bit. Make sure they're on there. Okay, there we go. Now that's installed. Now we gotta put everything into the case. All right, now speaking of the radiator portion here, if your case came with these little rubber uh, grommets, I think is what they're called, I might be calling them the wrong thing. Make sure you use these when you attach your radiator and your, uh, your radiator basically and your fans if it doesn't already have it. Now this particular radiator has them already built in and the fans do as well. 
Um, but they don't have it on the backside that attaches to the case itself. So I definitely recommend you use these. There's going to be, this is going to be, um, vibration. It's going to cause vibration with the fans moving, the radiator flowing water through it. Um, that's could be a, a noise source for you. Um, so I definitely recommend if you don't have them, you can pick them up super cheap from micro center, um, or other locations. They're just these little pieces of rubber. Um, and you know, if you even have like a little rubber washer, you could use that as well. Just something to protect it. So it's not metal on metal. Um, and if you put the screws in tighten up, it shouldn't make any noise anyways, but just in my experience, stuff like that can come loose. So if you have a little rubber, uh, piece like this that you can put in there to, to shield that vibration from happening, I think it'll help with the noise. All right, now we're going to talk about case flow. Um, this has to be planned out ahead of time so you know what you're doing. And basically what I mean by that is how your air is going to flow through your case. And uh, most, most of the time you want all the air to flow in one direction if you can. That way you're not having hair, air hit each other and it just dissipates inside the case. You know, you want it to flow through the case to pull that hot air out and to bring new cooler air in. Um, so with our power supply coming down here and the fan is supposed to push up, we have air pushing this way, which is perfect. And then we're gonna, we have the water cooler for the uh, heat sink right here. Let's get it down a little bit so you can see it. And I have the fans pushing up this way. So this is gonna be attached to the top right here. I don't have it attached yet, but just to show you, but just to show you, so this is the radiator, and these are the way the fans are, and they're gonna be pushing air through the radiator up out, out of the case to the top of the case. This is where you're gonna put the screws from the case into the radiator at the top down there. You just wanna make sure there's air flowing there. So when you put it to your case, make sure you got airflow. So that's how you wanna set all that up, set all that up. Now, it can flow out multiple ways. Like we have fans here that come defaulted into the case, and they are flowing air out. So they're going to be sucking hot air out. So that's fine too. Um, you never, it's never going to be perfect if you have, unless you just have limited amount of fans. It's always better to have more fans than no fans, right? So um, that's how our case flow, as I like to call it, is going to be set up. And I think it's going to work out really well for this build. All right, that's how you install the Kraken 240 into your motherboard. This particular motherboard was a Gigabit B650. But this will work for almost you know any board. You can follow very similar instructions. Like I said, make sure you read the instructions from the heatsink and the motherboard and everything else, and make sure you're doing everything the proper way. Hopefully, this video helped you. Don't forget to help us out by hitting that subscribe button. And thanks for watching.